I must appeal to Babangida, if he really, truly loves Nigeria, he should set Nigeria free. If he becomes a civilian, as, if, as the army seems to be telling him to do now, it will make things a lot easier for it to be one civilian against the other. A man with a loaded gun, it takes a lot of courage to confront him the way God has had to make me do in the last few days. The iconic late Chief Moshud Kashimao Olawale Abiola was a man whose fame and fortune stretched from Nigeria to the far corners of the globe. So, if you want to know just how wealthy MKU Abiola was and where all that money came from, buckle up as we unravel the story of his colossal wealth. MKU Abiola, often hailed as the richest Nigerian of his time, wasn't just a business magnate. He was a visionary philanthropist and a prominent figure in African affairs. His influence wasn't confined to Nigeria. It resonated across South Africa, Libya, Ghana, Italy, the UK, the USA, and Lebanon. But how did he amass such wealth? And what made him stand out? Abiola's financial empire wasn't a one-industry show. While he had a significant stake in Nigeria's oil sector, his wealth stemmed from diverse investments, from aviation, farming to printing, publishing and communication. Abiola was a true icon. His business portfolio included Abiola Farms, Radio Communications Nigeria, Concord Press, and even the Abiola Football Club. In the 1980s, Abiola's enterprises employed over 5,000 people, making him a major player in West Africa's economic landscape. He wasn't just about business. Abiola held key positions in the Nigerian Stock Exchange, the G15 Business Council, and was a patron of foundations like Kwame Nkrumah and W.E.B. Deboa. How rich was MKO Abiola really? Well, that's a bit of a puzzle. The exact numbers about his wealth are a mystery, but people say it could be over $1 billion before he passed away. Some sources even say his wealth was over $2.5 billion. Imagine that. What's certain is that Abiola's wealth wasn't just a drop in the bucket. It was like an ocean of money. So, here is the question. How do you measure a person's wealth when the figures are as big as Abiola's? That's like trying to count all the grains of sand on a beach. Abiola's riches were more than a sum. They shaped a lavish life. He owned private jets, luxurious homes in Nigeria, the UK, and the USA. He globetrotted meeting leaders in his jet, which he repainted to match his political party's colors. But in his vast wealth, he didn't just indulge, he generously shared. However, before we continue with his other endeavors, here is a brief overview of MKO Abiola's companies and the main purpose about them. MKO Abiola created the Abiola Group in the 1970s, a diverse company that significantly contributed to his success. The establishment played a crucial part in building his wealth. One of Abiola's notable contributions was in the telecommunication sector. His company, Concord Press of Nigeria, established the first private radio station, Radio Communications of Nigeria, RCN, in the country. The Abiola Group expanded into publishing, publishing newspapers and magazines. Abiola ventured into the oil and gas industry with Summit Oil International Limited, the company engaged in exploration, production, and marketing of petroleum products. Abiola's influence extended to the banking sector through his ownership of the Habib Bank. This marked his significant presence in the financial industry. MKO Abiola valued education, evident in his establishment of Abiola bookshops to promote literacy. His commitment to education was further reflected in his sponsorship of scholarships and educational programs. The Abiola Group made substantial investments in real estate, contributing to the development of infrastructure and urbanization in Nigeria. This included residential and commercial property. MKO Abiola made a significant impact on society through his involvement in sports, particularly as the owner of Abiola Babes, a football club in Nigeria established in the year 1980. Abiola Babes gained prominence and was promoted to the Nigeria First Division in 1984. The club played its home matches at the MKO Abiola Stadium in Abiokuta with a seating capacity of 23,325. During its active years, Abiola Babes achieved notable success. The team clinched victory in the Nigerian FA Cup 
twice in 1985 and 1987, showcasing their prowess on the national football stage. Abiola Babes participated in the African Cup Winners' Cup, making two appearances in 1986 and 1987. Although they reached the semi-finals in 1987, their journey in the competition was a testament to their competitive spirit. However, the team faced financial challenges in the 1990s, leading to a hiatus. Despite the brief reformation in May 2000, Abiola Babes was ultimately disbanded in the year 2001 due to persistent financial constraints. If the time is right, if, 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 if the time is right, and um, it all depends on a lot of things. I haven't been taking part in this political process since, uh, since in 1987. You need to know the people you are working with, and uh, you need to know that a tree does not make a forest. Like I said, nobody plants with only one hand. It has to be both. It has to be. It has to be so many hands. But there, are, there is this general acceptance. Yeah, there is the attitude general. of our people that it's about time we had a leader yeah. from mm -hmm. this part of the country too. While not a traditional company, Abiola's foray into politics significantly impacted Nigeria. He contested the 1993 presidential election under the platform of the Social Democratic Party, SDP, and won, though the election was later annulled. This event left a lasting legacy in Nigerian politics. Abiola didn't just live a fancy life. He spent lots of time and money helping others. He backed Southern African liberation movements in the 1970s and worked hard for reparations for slavery and colonialism. Abiola's impact on education was huge. He funded the building of schools, libraries, mosques, and churches all across Nigeria. He personally talked to every African head of state and every leader in the black diaspora, aiming to make sure Africans spoke with one strong voice on these important issues. From 1972 until he passed away, Abiola received 197 traditional titles from 68 communities in Nigeria. Why? Because he he financially helped to build 63 secondary schools, 121 mosques and churches. He was also the grand patron of 149 societies or associations in Nigeria. So, why did Abiola invest so much in these causes? What drove him to connect with leaders globally? And how did he manage to support such a vast number of projects across Nigeria? The answers lie in the heart of Abiola's dedication to making a difference, leaving an impact that reached far beyond beyond his own success. MKO Abiola wasn't just a business guy. He made a big mark in Nigeria. Reflecting on MKO Abiola's legacy unveils a chapter of immense generosity, particularly towards Nigerian students. In the year 1990, this remarkable man from Abiokuta Ogun State made a lasting impact on education. Can you imagine the scale of his generosity? He bestowed 1 million naira upon each state university, 500,000 naira to every federal university, and two. 250,000 naira to each polytechnic nationwide. Nigerian students during Abiola's time were the direct beneficiaries of his benevolence. The significance of his actions in the year 1990 is etched in their memories. Abiola was smart and had a great CV. People called him a tycoon, which means he was like a big boss in business. Also, he was known as the top giver in Africa. What is the true measure of wealth? Perhaps, in the case of M. K. U. Abiola, it lies in the lives he transformed, the causes he championed, and the indomitable spirit that continues to inspire generations. Do you think Nigeria will ever forget M. K. U. Abiola? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for being here, and I will catch up with you next time.